<laughs> hello, right. hello. Welcome on in to another episode, another live episode of the Whiskey Crusaders here on Monday night. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. I'm Matt. I'm and today Bill. we are joined by Bill, the Whiskey Dick. Uh, I got no instruction. I jumped in. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for joining us, Bill. We appreciate it. No problem. We know that, uh, Bill's helped us tremendously in our journey here to uh, not suck at this. So <laughs> the beginning was pretty rough. Thanks for oh, right. Bill's help and uh, knowledge of watching our shitty first videos. We really appreciate that. <laughs> so it's all good. Thanks for being on. And tonight we're going to talk about space side scotch because everybody does like Isla and all the other stuff, but let's do space side. It's usually the most consistent and interesting. Maybe not the most, but there's a lot of cool stuff in space side. So we just brought out a crap load of whiskey and. We'll talk about it and see what everybody thinks and see what else is drinking in the chat. And let's see who's in the chat, speaking of that. So let's see. we got Travis Waller, Donald Rantz, uh, Mark G Goins, Spencer Mav, Steve A, Matthias M, uh, Travis Waller, Craig F, Sweet T1985, Elvis Presley, Stellar Matrix. All right. So we got 29. That's good. Yeah, I know they just finished up over there, so... Hopefully everybody in the chat can pour some Space Side whiskey along with us, and I guess let's see what everybody's drinking in the chat tonight. Hopefully Space Side. Sure. All right. So what do you have in your glass first, Bill? What do you want, you want to start with that you got? Well, let's see. So if I'm going to go first, I'm going to pour one of my favorite Space Sides. Oops, actually, my favorite Space Side, Booker's 2018 so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. My mistake. Sorry. Let me just uh, hold on. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right. So actually, when I was looking for some space sides, I was a little surprised to find how few I had because I actually generally like space sides. Um, but I'm going to start with the Glenn Grant 12. All right. We can do that. Let's see. Got that one too. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, the hardest point here is how to not to put like a hundred bottles of freaking space eyes on my counter. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I to yeah, it was actually it was interesting watching the the Discord earlier today with um people kind of being like, I didn't even realize I had like four space eyes. I thought I had none, or I thought I had ten. It's just and then the that general really consensus of, of space eyes versus some of the other um, regions, which I'm sure we'll get into, but. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we got some mobile joining us now. We have got Nick Foles and Tech 187, Lokins, Robot Scott, T Green, William Davilar, Charles Ashworth. So yeah, Ice House. <coughs> oh, thanks for joining us, Ice House. I think I've seen you in here before. Thanks for coming. You didn't give us that one, Matt. Yeah, I gave it to you last time when I gave you Sam's stuff. It's in that box. Oh. It's a different box of whiskeys. So this oh. is the problem that William and Sarah, I give them lots of boxes of whiskeys every week. <laughs> they go search through which box of whiskeys? They're everywhere. Now, how far apart from each other do you guys live? Uh, like five it? minutes. Yeah, it's like two okay. miles. No, you and, said Glen Grant. You know, I've, I've got some friends who have turned on the whiskey. Um, you know, they're still kind of getting into it, or maybe a couple of them are, like, really into it. None of them have any interest in really doing video other than, like, I've got a couple people who have told me that they want to jump on, but they don't really know anything. They mostly just want to drink like expensive or yeah. whiskeys, which I'm also totally fine with as long as they're entertained. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah. it's nice that you guys like between you guys and the Scotch for Dummies, like just having people so close is awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. that out. it does just per pure happenstance that uh, <laughs> that worked out because it's, it's yeah we spend like every other Sunday at Matt's house pretty much and. Uh, some other days throughout the week sometimes. <laughs> you said Grant 12, right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, because I don't know if you know, Bill, how we actually ended up meeting for our channel. You know, actually. It's hilarious. Um, so uh, William's sister's actually been cutting my hair for like 25 years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't know. So I was telling her, I was like, hey, I'm going down to this event in Austin for whiskey. She's like, yeah, my brother's talking about that. He's going there too. I'm like, no shit. So I was like, so I texted him on the Patreon. I was like, hey, I hear we have something in common. Apparently, it's your sister. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they instantly became BFFs. <laughs> like, texting until all hours of the night. Yes, yeah, so that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, and then we like English stuff for Austin, and ever since then, it's just been lots of fun with whiskey. Oh, yeah. like, hey, let's start a channel because, you know, why the hell not? Yeah, <laughs> so. that's a great line, Matt. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good line. 
Oh, oh. Yeah. all right. Uh, so, like whiskey itself, you know, Land Grant 12 is, uh, you know, it's pretty famous. Um, obviously, you know, it's the, the uh, name, I guess, what is it? Colonel Grant, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. No, Captain, Captain Grant. So, anyway, so I guess in, what was it, a couple years, 2017, the 18 year old, this was uh, Jim Murray's Scotch of the Year. So, you know, this is pretty good, but I like this one. It's nice and fruity. And it's a light. It's a really good one to get into from bourbon drinkers, I think, as well. I just think it's a really nice, fruity, easy drinker for sure. I completely agree. And uh, Spencer, thank you for that. I totally didn't even notice them. I had uh, these little icons up on my my monitor here. Oh, awesome. I saw them. But like, I don't know if they can see that or not. I guess the answer when, is yes. When you use a DSLR for uh, the video, it, you got to have it in manual mode. Otherwise, it has all the stuff. And yeah, so that was it. Okay. Man, I love this whiskey. Like this it's is not a, good. a good one to start with. I, I mean, I, I definitely yeah. had that in mind when I chose it, but I just, I like starting with this whiskey, like even just normally. Absolutely. Yeah. An easy drinker. Yeah. Hmm. How much did you cost? Somebody mentioned it was really cheap. I, I forget, like 35 bucks, $39, something? Uh, something like that. Yeah, it's like 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really good. Um, oh, and Pit Face Barbecue, which is Brian, the guy who filmed all of our barbecue mm. episodes. Up. He's in the chat. Mm -hmm. Brian, we need more meat. <laughs> yeah, Brian, whenever, whenever you want to do another one of those episodes, you just let us know. We will be there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've seen the stuff you guys have been needing. I might uh, you know, fly out there for, for some of that. You Maybe. should. Oh, yeah. That good. yeah, I mean, Texas barbecue, like... That is yeah, a there's good Texas barbecue and bad Texas barbecue. My wife said we have to go to our barbecue place. Went to a place on Saturday. It it sucked. It was terrible barbecue. We should never go back. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm not gonna lie. We haven't had barbecue since that Sunday, and we thought about it the other day, and we were like, no, we're gonna just be disappointed. Yeah, Brian, we didn't have barbecue. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh, mm. he so, had some other recipes for us. He's down. Let's ooh, do this. Yay! All right. Hey, hey, Bill! This have you ever had the uh, the ma the major's reserve of this by chance, or the ten? I haven't yet, but when I was doing my research on the thing, I, I saw that, and I was like, mm, I kind of want to get my hands on it. It's the major's reserve, if I remember correctly. It, it was it wasn't a no age statement, was no, it? Yeah, it's no age statement. Okay, all right. Um, but like, is it is it good? I mean, oh, it's great. Okay, all right. It was it's that's the first Glen Ground I had. I saw it at a bar, and it was like it was five bucks. I'm like, I'll try that. I don't know a damn thing about it. I'll try. I was like, hey, this is actually really good. And I'm like, a bottle's mm. 30 bucks? Even better. Yeah. So, That's yeah, cool. and it's like, this is nice and fruity. Um, yeah, because the 12 basically replaced, they got rid of that, they got rid of the 10, and now they just have the 12, the 18. They have a 15, but that one's, I think, cast strength. That one's like 115 proof. Um, yeah, it's good. They have a 21, which is really tasty. Speaking okay. of proof, at only 43%, this on the palate is much richer mm -hmm. and uh, fuller mm -hmm. than a 43% typically is. Completely agree. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. good with you. And for I being on the old, I mean, again, like it, it tastes and it, it tastes older and it tastes a higher proof than what it is. And I mean, in my book, that's a, that's a good stellar whiskey right there. For sure. I remember thinking when I was drinking this one for, you know, during the review that there was nothing lacking about it. You know, like a, especially for for what it is, for the price, for the type, for everything, there was nothing that I wished it had done better. Um, but I'm curious if you guys have a differing opinion at all. No, this was like probably one of the earliest scotches of space high that I really love. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 Grant, or you know, what do you think, William? I completely agree. Compared yep. to the other Glens, the Glen Levitts, the Glen, uh, yeah. the Glen Morangies, the uh, it, this is just richer and darker and deeper. It has a lot more going on. There are um, red fruit notes in there, along with the typical peaches and pe pears and uh, and butterscotch. It's I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it's agreed. Super fruity. Yeah, yeah if I think of the Glens, like you said, this is probably one of the best Glens for sure. For me, I uh, I don't get the butterscotch. It, for me, it's it's. I mean, I'm sure it's there. I just more I'm stuck on all the fruit notes that are in here. <laughs> it's uh, just between the like I find I I smell it like once and then immediately I'm drinking it and I don't <laughs> like it. Don't take the time to smell it. I just want to want to just have it. Drink it. You know. 
Yeah. So are you uh, you eating your bacon there, Will? Oh, of course. <laughs> Matt, where's your bacon? <laughs> now, we brought him anything. I hate it because we, we're a cup here. I got it now. We're all good. You know, I had bacon over the weekend. I, I wish I would have thought to keep some. I didn't even think about it. Uh, it's all good. We always have bacon. I know. Do you do anything specific with it, or is it just cooked? Um, I buy thick cut bacon and I bake it in the oven okay. very slowly, essentially. Mm. Now I, you know, I realize this is completely off topic, but I have to I have to ask you another question with the bacon. So, <laughs> so <laughs> when you say that you cook it slowly, so like when I, I cook bacon in the oven sometimes too, and I'm just like a savage, I probably just put it on like 350 and wait until it's done. What do you like? What do you do? No, 350 actually sounds about right. I, I start it at uh, at 375. And then in about 15 minute increments, I lower the temperature down. Hmm. Um, and after about, after the first flip, I wait a little bit longer, probably about 20 minutes or so after the first flip. Uh, and then I just turn it off or turn it down to warm and then let them sit in there for a while uh, to finish cooking up. Cause they're not, they're not quite done when you think they're done. So you have like an hour long process to make bacon. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's about, totally worth it. It's about yeah. an hour long for each batch. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at it. It looks the perfect color. They're perfect. Like, like it's yeah. Like that looks delicious. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. I, I learned how to cook bacon from the restaurant I work at. So, uh, okay. All right. I, uh, I once ate an entire package of bacon in a single sitting and it was one of the, one of the darkest moments of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you should see it when we bring it to tastings and this last one we went to, we didn't put it out right away, but the second it hit the counter, mm -hmm. everybody was just like, what? <laughs> and it was gone. Three pounds of bacon, gone. Bacon is a surprisingly good finger it. food. I mean, huh? Bacon is a surprisingly good finger food. And it goes well with whiskey, so. Yeah. yeah. I'm out of the whiskey category, bacon goes well. Yes, exactly. Tra Travis is confirming that your whiskey is good. <laughs> I mean, uh, your bacon is good. Yes, it's true. Thank you, Travis. Yeah, he yeah. Would have a lot of these yeah, Jason, the Master Jump joined in too. Hey, Jason, how's it going? Hmm. My glass is empty. I want to move on to another one. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so, let's see who else. Trey Coon joined, who was at the event uh, with us here on Tuesday. Nice to see you in the chat. Hello, right. hello. Jeffrey Wack. Travis was here at the tasting as well. So he lucky he was in town for business and he, he got to have a chance to do the old Pulteney night. So he lucked out. Nice. Um, All right. Which one do I do now, Bill? Oh, my choice? All right. Well, we'll just do whatever you got. Then I got all sorts of other stuff. No, I suppose that's true. I'm more worried about what Will and Sarah might have. We um, have whatever Matt can have. So I drink it at my leisure. <laughs> I've got the three Game of Thrones whiskeys, which I do kind of want to get to at some point. Okay. But frankly, I, I kind of want to go to the um, the Ben, ben Ramak, uh 10. All right. I probably have not drank this whiskey in at least a couple of years. So it just sits in the back of my cabinet and I forgot I have it. I was going to say that looks different than my bottle somehow. It probably just a new label. Yeah, because this is this, I don't know, this orangish colored can. Yeah. Comes in. I noticed that there was like an organic junk one. You know, yeah, there is. Like made from free range whiskey or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I just got a really weird mental picture. It's just not good. So, but uh, yeah, I don't even know what that would like. I don't. I can't imagine that makes any difference whatsoever. I who the heck? I sincerely doubt it. Huh. It would be different, but whether it's any better or not is a different story. I totally forgot. There's almost like a like a peat. Um, yep. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Peat, peat smoke. Yeah. Exactly. Totally agree with you. That's when I opened up the port for Will. I was like, hey, there's Pete in this. I don't remember this in here. Yeah, I can smell it. Yeah. I totally like I questioned everything I've ever known about whiskey for a second. I'm like, this is a space side, right? <laughs> yeah, so, there's a few peated space sides. I mean, you've got this one, you've got uh that Glenfiddich firing cane, the Balvenie Pete Week, they the Anok uh Pete Cutter series. There's, there's a few, not a lot. But there's a few. They're all a little bit different. That's, that's true. I've actually, I've had the Anak, um, one of the the peated ones. Actually, there's this guy named Nick who uh, I met. He's like all about Anak 
Um, he's got a whole bunch of different ones. He doesn't work for the, I don't quite understand what he even does, honestly, but he's just <laughs> a bunch of whiskey and he wants to come on the show. So I'm actually probably going to have him on the, on the live stream. Or something. Um, but he's got a bunch of really good stuff. So, I don't know. We'll see. Good whiskey is always a plus. Always let them out yeah. have good whiskey and they're interesting. You know, I don't know if I'm uh if it's psychosomatic or something, but I'm I'm smelling like barbecue kind of on this. Not not I mean Pete can occasionally get that, but there's almost <laughs> like think like a burnt tip kind of um like a briquette. Yeah. So yeah, you know, so you're actually getting like the coal, the charcoal? Yeah. I get the, yeah, charcoal smoke. Hmm. No, it's not heavily peated, but it tastes really good with bacon in your mouth, though. Mm. Mm, this is tasty. A lot of things do. It still the bacon still isn't covered enough for me to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question for you guys. So you mentioned that that the bacon goes really good with whiskey tasting. What do you, if anything, what do you guys do to cleanse your palate as far as food goes? Eat more bacon. Yeah. No. <laughs> Water. 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 <laughs> Just water, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, bacon is well. Or just just weaker whiskeys in between your cask strengths. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's me, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of water. Um, we usually drink like seltzer water. Mm -hmm. Um prefer that, but water of any sort. Hmm. By the way, quick quick thing for everybody in the chat. If you haven't given a thumbs yet up yet. Do it. Help support the Whiskey Crusaders channel. Drive them to the top. So I saw uh, I saw your boy Dan is going to be on uh, Whiskey in the Sixes channel pretty soon. All right. Yeah. Kind of interesting. I'll be. I'll have to tune in for that one. That sounds good. American whiskeys. Yeah. I, I, find that, hey, I know we're talking space sides, but I find American whiskeys are very few and far between. But they have a very unique taste to them. So. Definitely. No, well, definitely better than Canadian ones I've tried that I've tried. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of Canadian single malts, but the Glen Breton Ten was really good. But I had one called it like the Kinnon. That was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, had a few others. None of them really stood out as good, anything good at all. I'm hoping that in certain packages arises from certain people that that'll change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find out when it arrives. Thanks. Awesome. So, uh, Will and Sarah, are you both drinking the, the Ben Ramak as well, the 10? I'm not. She stopped. I took her glass and poured it into mine. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Um, it's nice. Um, I'm, I'm also picking up on the gamey notes. Um, and I think it's more just a, a black pepper and a, um, a char mm. kind of flavor, more so than like an Ardbeg meaty. But yeah. I, I am picking up on it. And Stella, and Stella Matrix is opening her first space side for us tonight. So that's awesome. She is opening uh, the one level 15. Nice. That's awesome. I want to know how she, what she thinks of that. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm kind of shocked that's her first space side. She's she's like active in the Discord. I would assume she's pretty. Yeah. pretty uh, the only one in her collection, team. maybe. Either yeah. way, that's cool. Yeah, for sure. Who? Uh, so. For the people in the chat, what are you guys drinking space side? If you are, then what are you drinking? If you're not, why aren't you? And or what are you drinking? <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, so uh for those of you in the, the audience, so I thought that this stream was gonna be nine o'clock tonight. <laughs> and, and Matt and I uh, I mean I should have known better, I mean for real, like, but still, so I thought it was nine and I was struggling to get through the the day as it was. And uh, and so I'm like, okay, I can make it till nine. I could probably push it till ten. I'll try to be entertaining. It'll be fine. And then I find out later on, hey, you're not starting till ten thirty. <laughs> so instead, I just filmed a couple episodes, got a couple of drinks in me, and now I'm a lot lot better off. So <laughs> <laughs> a little loose. <laughs> okay. Dave is drinking a young of an eleven year first full sherry cast cash range signatory. That sounds delicious. Trey's drinking the monkey shoulder. Is monkey shoulder a space side? Well, it's made up of three space sides. So it's made up of three. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, Balvany, uh, Glenfiddich, and Canenvy. So, yeah, technically, yes. Okay. It's a, it's a blended malt space side. So that was one thing. I have I have a decent amount of blended scotch for God knows what reason at the moment, but I uh, I didn't really want to do the legwork of trying to figure out 
what they were made of and see if it actually was a space lab. Yeah, a lot of them, you know, it's a crap. She's like, well, we'll tell you these two, but there's another 40 in here. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Yeah, for sure. That, that's another major problem we, we yeah. tend to get. There was somebody who, who took a, um, uh, a very ill, uh, whatever, a, a poor, uh, I can't think of words. <clears throat> there was somebody who did a very bad job trying to convince me that Johnny Walker Red might be a space side and that I should go oh. buy a bottle for tonight. Oh, <laughs> that's like, an evil person. Not at all. <laughs> I like space you're sides. Bringing, you're bringing back bad memories of yesterday. It's so bad. It's just so <laughs> bad. Yeah. Yeah, Bill, memory we, is coming soon. We yeah. literally just filmed the Johnny Walker Red episode yesterday. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, and my it God. Was it's, just, it's pretty funny, though. It's, it was actually worse whiskey than I remember it being. Yeah. Right? Right? So much worse. You know, yeah. and you guys all gave me crap for the, the White Walker. Like, White Walker was better than Johnny Walker yes, Red. Yes, it is. A lot better. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, don't get me wrong. It's not great. But no. it was bad. As long as it's cold. Yes. Yeah, as long cold. as it's cold, it is, it is a drinkable. Uh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's horrible warm. Yeah. Warm White Walker, I think, actually is worse than red. Uh -huh. yeah, I would give you that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's right up there. Yeah. That wasn't fun yesterday. No. <laughs> like, mm, a nice. We had some fun ones. Warm White, White Walker. Walker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is anybody's glass uh, empty? Oh yeah. All right. Um, cool. Mine's been for a while. I I don't know if it's my choice again, but I, sure. Why I'll not? take the liberty if if not told otherwise. Works I fine. would love to go do the Spayburn uh, companion cask. Yes. All right. Nice. Yes. yes. Uh, it is that bad? Red Walker is red, the Johnny Walker Red is horrible, Dustin. It's not debatable. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> disgusting. People are saying that you can kill the red too. Now I will be. I will say I did not try that. I couldn't imagine any instance where I could respectively come onto a stream and say, you know what? I found a way to drink Johnny Walker Red that isn't terrible. Oh. I feel like it would just end my YouTube career at that point. I mean, you throw you could, it down the sink. If you mix it with a bunch of crap, I, I guess you could drink it. <laughs> Only way. I mean, yeah. If you put one part of Johnny Walker Red into like a glass of, of Booker's, you might be all right. So. Mm. I think it was Dr. Pepper. I'm sure it's horrible. Yeah. Even the Johnny Walker website says to mix this whiskey. Yeah. I know it's going to be bad. Just Actually, like the White Walker says, serve it frozen because it's bad. I have the uh, Suntory Toki back there, and, and I've drank that a couple times neat, and eh, it's just not exciting. No. Um, and when you look on their website, they're all about the highball, which mm. I'm like, okay, that's fair. They're being honest with. Put this in something else and make it alcoholic. Um, it was exciting get... at the beginning. It was exciting like when you're first starting out and you don't really know much better. It yeah. was great, but not so much anymore. Like, yay, forty dollar Japanese whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mr. No. Worldwide. <laughs> no. <laughs> this smells <laughs> glorious. Mm -hmm. I know, right? I was shocked at how good this is. It's just it's... it was a total surprise. Stayburn. Oh, the, the companion cast? Yeah. Especially for, I think it was like 30 bucks. I know. I couldn't, like, it, this is another one. It's, I would not say it's as good, or at least to me, as the Glen Grant 12. It's different, for sure. Yeah. But it was another one that was surprising how good it was for the price. And Matt, yours is a store pick? Yeah, this is a goody goody single cast pick. Goody goody. Yeah, same for a liquor store. Yeah. It's a chain here. Hmm. Oh, that's tasty. Yeah, they're good people. That they help procure mm. many of the bottles. So Spencer, which Spayburn are you drinking? Rich. Oh yeah, that's that's good. Really like that. That's great. This is this is again playing around in those uh, red fruits uh, and and just darker notes, the plum and the uh, raspberry, um, blackberry mm -hmm. kind of category. Um, this is really really good. Oh, poor Spencer. He doesn't like his companion cask. I'm, I'm oh, that sucks. That. I mean, it, it's possible that there's some out there that aren't that great. I mean, there's there's a lot of variants. For for those of you in the chat that don't know, the companion cask, every single bottle is a store pick. Um, which oh. 
is kind of a cool concept. I, I, I have to imagine it's not the first time that's happened, but I it's the first time I've heard of that happening. Yeah, yeah I know they did a hell of a pick on this one. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, mine's from the New Hampshire State Liquor Store. Um, it's like, but it's it's called something else. I, I just yes, uh, New Hampshire Liquor and Wine Outlets is what they call it. But everybody just calls it New Hampshire State Liquor Store. Even the even the road signs like so whatever. I always like to point this out. You guys ever, have you guys seen my awesome Lafroy mm -hmm. uh, it it awesome. wax glass? Isn't this awesome? That's yeah, so cool. I want one of those. Yeah, it's so cool. I wish I wish that they kept doing this. The the place I go, um, Julio's Liquors, they do a thing every year, an event every year. And last year they didn't do this, but the year prior they did. So I was so excited to have them dip another glass. I just want to keep getting more of these. But <laughs> it might just be a one time thing. All good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Spencer says his didn't get enough air. Well, that'll help. Mm -hmm. Happens. There's days, you know, you go to a whiskey you really like, and you're like, eh, it's not that great today. And you go back to it a week later, like, oh, okay, this is good. It's just yeah. whatever you've eaten or your mood. A lot of times your mood affects what whiskey you drink. It does for me. That's that's true. You know how you get more air in your whiskey? I uh, You just kind of lift it a little higher and pour it into your mouth. It's <laughs> 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 Make the uh, journey. The the wants to know if I can slam this glass down without breaking it. That's as much as I'm willing to do without waking people. Up. <laughs> but that's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I, I pretty solid. Very happy for this one. Yeah, and at forty six percent too. So they bumped the proof up on it too, which is nice. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So yeah, the normal space spay burns are what forty two. Something like yeah, it sounds yeah, it sounds right. Somewhere it's there. not forty, but it might be. It might be. I think the ten might be like you said, like forty two. And I think the the Brandon Oric, I think, is the forty. Did you like the Br Brandon Brandon Oric? It's fine. I think it's bad. It wasn't great. Yeah, I remember. I I distinctly remember not liking that one. Um, but it was pretty early on in my videos too, so I might have had bad expectations. It was boring. I think that's the biggest thing. It was just like eh. could be. I think it was it's twenty bucks. I mean, you know, yeah. you don't really expect a lot. Oh, you can get a one seven five for thirty. <laughs> so, Will and Sarah, what are you what are you thinking? I enjoy this. So it's rich. It's fruity. Mm -hmm. I like the proof. Mm -hmm. I still think the first one we tried was uh, better. Yeah, the the Glen Goyne, uh ten. No? I still think uh, stuck it's out more not, to me. Well, is that what we tried? Just being a little bit know. more rich, same kind of category, but I don't know. To me, I prefer the Glen going over that, but I think this is really good. So, Sarah, I know I mention it pretty much every time, but your hair is like the best thing ever. Thank you. <laughs> if it, like every time I see your hair, I feel like there's a new color in it. And um, that's because since the last time you saw me, there is. Oh, well, see, I'm very perceptive. <laughs> I just surprised every time she shows up. Yeah. But it'll be whatever it is. Who knows? Yeah, and it just naturally fades this way, and I just let it go for a month or so. And yeah, I mean that makes sense. If yeah. I were you, I would every time it kind of grew out, I would just slap a new color on that new the new stuff and then let it go. <laughs> just slap a new color on there. Yeah, I mean that's how, that's how hair works, right? I, I clearly have a lot of experience. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, she do. literally does all of the work herself. I do it myself. She doesn't oh, she doesn't cut her hair own hair, but all of the coloring she does all her are on her own. Yeah. Okay. So, so what are you doing, Will? You can't even help out? Jeez. I I've, offered, I've offered to help. She didn't want me in her way. Why don't you do that with your beard? Get the rainbow beard. <laughs> my, my understanding is that there's circles, the different circles where that means something very different. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I have not done that. <laughs> you yeah, got a point. We should not do this. <laughs> not like you're teaching people about wine. You get the rainbow beard going on. I just, I don't know. That would be quite a sight. <laughs> Yeah, we're not gonna go there. <laughs> I'll, I'll handle the colors. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty. Funny. You said you wanted to get to some of these uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, I got a Dalweenie. Yes. So the the uh, House St uh, Stark. Now yeah. I've got a, a special special bottle of House Stark. Although I've already taken the bottle out, the bottom fell out. So when I lift it up, it's normally when it's in there, it's it's perfect. 
But uh, yeah, it's just kind of like. That's you know. awesome. At least it didn't fall out on the floor. Yeah, I uh, I managed to catch it actually. It almost fell to the ground. So. Oh gosh. That would have been very Matt, sad. Yeah. This is different than the one that you sent for Sam, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a different one. Okay, because this is the one that you sent for Sam was the one that I liked the most that that's night. Pardue. This is Dal Winnie. Oh, he William gave me this. Okay, oh. I I was just say I was just showing her that you also gave me a Game of Thrones Cardu. Hmm. Yes, I do. Yeah. There's there's the Singleton, the Cardu, and the Dal Winnie. This is true. Yeah. Now Dal Winnie markets themselves as a Highland, but they're technically in the space aisle, which is why we're including them tonight because they have the highest elevation for any Scotch distillery. Um, and so they have a really nice thing because most of the time there's snow in the ground up there. So they don't, and their, their standard ones are 15 years. That's the very first thing in the range for okay. their standard stuff. And I, I really like, this is one This is one of my favorite also as well, for, as far as the regular, I think this is the uh, Game of Thrones one, but I really, really like their stuff. I don't feel bad now because I, I remember, like we were talking about this earlier because somebody mentioned that the Delwini, it might have actually even been you, was a space side, but it says Highland Saint Mark because I was like digging yeah. around in my, in my. I think that was Steve that was talking about that. Maybe it was Steve. Yeah, I was uh, digging around in my bar for everything that said space side, and I only came up with like you know five bottles. Right, just like McAllen's a space side, but it says Highland because it's a choice they chose in marketing. Mm. I mean, that's interesting. And it could get you more space side from where it's located than anything else for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just look on a map. I just base these on maps, <laughs> not uh, not the marketing. So Matt, can I ask you a hard question that you might not know the answer to? Sure. Why not? <laughs> so this came, this came up once again in the chat earlier today. How would you define a space side versus a Highland as far as taste? Um. And lowland, if you want to throw that in there, I think that your space hards are a little bit more fruity and a little more light, whereas I think your highlands tend to be a little bit more edgy per se, or a little bit more heavily sherry for whatever reason. That seems to be, and that's, of course, that's a house choice, is from what I gather, and you know, it just depends on, and you know, because a lot of them are because you know, got like Limerangi and Dalmore and Old Pulteney, those are all highlands, Wolfburn. And then you got like next you got then you got those are the you know the higher up highlands. Then you got other ones that are highlands like Aberfeldy and Glen Goyne, um, and those are of course way down the southern part of it. And Tomatin and all those seem to be a little bit more lighter. So they're all a little bit slighter. That's what I define it as. It's kind of like that heart of Scotland where all these space sides are compared to the highlands have a little more varying range. I find. Hmm. I mean, it's subjective, obviously, too. I mean. Yeah, I've noticed that they're really fruity, which I like. I enjoy them. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because if you ask me about Space Side, I would say it was fruity. But if you mm -hmm. ask me about a Highland, I would say it can be a lot of different things. I, mean, that, I, I get that the, like Highland Park is – they're you know off the shore, but I think they're still considered a Highland. Are they not? Well, that's a debate. It's like okay. if, if the islands are considered part of the Highland, then yes – some people, it depends on which person you ask, how many regions of Scotland there are, is a debate. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, Space Side technically is in the Highlands, so that is a debate whether that's a sub region or its own region. So mm -hmm. it depends on who you ask. So, so technically speaking, yes, Highland Park is part of the, is part of the Highlands if you include all the islands, but that also means that, you know, Talisker and Jura and Iran are part of the Highlands too. Right. So it just, it just depends on what technically the answer is. I don't know. I don't know if the SWA has actually ever said what the technical regions are. I'd have to figure that out. Because yeah. who uh, knows? Who cares? It's. I think that's <laughs> in our book, that's what matters. I'll tell you who cares: people on the internet. <laughs> I care, but you know what I mean. What, well, I know. There's, there's a word for that. Care. It's called pedantic. <laughs> I don't know what that word is. Okay. <laughs> that's a new word. New vocabulary. I don't know. It's funny. I, uh, I, for whatever reason, the last maybe like two years or so, I, um, I started getting like really into vocabulary and like learning new words and stuff. I think part of it was that I'm, I'm in meetings with a lot of like VPs and, and whatever, and I just want to sound smart um, by using proper words. 
And uh, so I started teaching a lot of people on my teams these random words and like what they actually mean. And now they use them all the time um, to the point where they often call me pedantic. So, which is not inaccurate, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I kind of my own worst enemy, but oh well. So let's see what we got. How many angels can dance on the head? Paying attention. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm just checking out the chat, see if anybody's got anything good going on. That's uh, a hell of a one limit that Steve says it's higher than a stag junior and two is ECPBs. Damn. That's <laughs> serious. What hey Steve, what is the uh the cash strength on it? What's the proof? <laughs> I wanna know now. So far I love it. <laughs> so far these have all definitely presented uh presented a very regional um similarity uh they are yeah. all like you were saying earlier just rich in fruits um beyond just the peaches and pears uh that i typically associate with uh barley so is uh it, it is different though mm -hmm. you know like it, it's it's almost noticeably different but but you're right will it's it's got similarities like it's it's interesting this is the lighter a little yeah. bit more um yeah it seems lighter and a little brighter brighter a little yeah, uh, not even more oily i would say i would say the oily is probably what i'm picking up as, as yeah. the major yeah. differentiator yeah and i think that's due with the elevation too they're so much higher than all the other ones in space side i think that makes a big difference for sure um but it does have more of the highland features but it's a space but it also has the space side features since it's on the border it would make sense that it that it is that way but the elevation thing is the biggest difference for them for sure I get a little chocolate in this one, which is different. Chocolate, huh? On the nose or in, in on the, the finish? Okay, oh, in the finish. Let me see. Actually, I, I should grab some water so I can have something fresh. Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, see, that's pretty funny. A lot of citrus in the profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that. That's that's for sure. But I love uh, kilojolts. Very nice things. There was the preposterous, preposterous Canadian whiskey. Is unmatched in flavor, ABN selection. It's truly the king of whiskey. <laughs> oh no, it's mostly bad. It's a lie. Don't, don't believe it's about the Canadians. They keep all the good stuff for themselves and send us their swill. Also, mm -hmm. as you know, it's black velvet. And people buy it, and it's terrible. And I had built a bank for buying a freaking mini bottle, and that stuff is horrible. <laughs> what is worse, black velvet or. Or Johnny Walker Red? That's the next question we need to answer. We are not doing that review. I've actually, uh, I've already answered that question for for myself at least. I oh. would choose the Black Velvet over the Johnny Walker Red. Oh my gosh! I know, isn't that crazy? And and I thought about it when I had it because of course as soon as I put out the uh, Black Velvet review, people started asking, and I still happen to have a Johnny Walker Red around, so I I uh, taste them side by side, and to me it was very clearly that the Black Velvet was better. Wow. I know, right? Like, <laughs> like how low is the bar? <laughs> yeah, Matt, you better hold on to that, you know, large amount of Johnny Walker Red that you have so we can do a review. Yeah. You know what? They're the same. In fact, both those bars are the same size. <laughs> because that's all it deserves. Yeah. Matt texted me the other night and he told me he told me about the the comparison that you guys he's like I'm so happy I bought a like a mini or whatever you call it yes. like a travel size yeah. tiny little I, and that, that's still 25 milliliters too much yes. <laughs> oh, just I'm trying so hard to get the chocolate on the on the finish here yeah yeah I give me a minute ah uh, the mist. I ask another question. Did you try the mist versus uh, Johnny Walker Red? Mm -mm. Well, that's Urban insane to do that. I know he's got some Canadian mist left. The only one that got or he can get some Johnny Walker Red and tell us the answer to this question. Yeah, I think I see what you're what you're picking out is the chocolate. Um, it was deep in there though. I'm mean, I'm actually impressed that you, you picked that up. It's it's like <laughs> on the finish, and it's kind of a long finish for me at least. But it's it's back there. Yeah, just goes to show the difference in tastes, you know what I mean? Oh, crap. Exactly. How, did, 
Steve Steve A keeps threatening to buy me like uh, almost like a 1.75 of Johnny Walker Red and bring it up <laughs> to Austin. He's said it. He's been saying that for like almost a year, and I'm I'm genuinely afraid that I, like because I'm not gonna bring it home in my luggage. Screw that. <laughs> I'll put it in the bar next to everything I saw La Quinta and say, if you want admittance, you must drink. You know what I'll, you know what I'll do? I, I, I know I've mentioned I'm, I'm planning on streaming while we're there. I'm going to set up a thing. I'm going to bring all my gear. That's I'm going to just slap a one uh, the 175 down on the table, and that's the admittance to be on the stream. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> all alone. Because everybody has choices to drink so much better whiskey. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. Like, you've got everything here, but this is what you're having. <laughs> but if you want to sit with me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, and that oh. would be even worse. You make them drink that and Boston, sipping not something Austin, better. Bill. Bill. What was that? He's bringing it to Boston, not Austin. Oh, okay. Well, he's, he's said both. <laughs> hey, he's going to bring you a bottle in both cities. Well, so I mean, and DH Silva's got a, a good oh. point. If somebody gives you a bottle, you you take it. You know, absolutely. It's, it's You're just gonna have twice as much Johnny Walker Red. Yeah, you don't look a gift gift horse in the mouth, even if it's got rotting teeth. So, <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah, Dram Man says that he doesn't like Forty Creek. I actually like Forty Creek. Okay. I go, I go a little bit. Uh, first off, hi Eric. Wait, I got your coin sitting on the the last glass over here. Um, oh, Eric. Thanks so. For 40 Creek is an interesting one. And it's funny that you mentioned that. I was just thinking about it last night. I was renaming all of my videos last night. And I, I, I also um, did a new thumbnail for both of my 40 Creek vid uh, videos. The copper pot still versus just the, what is it, the special reserve or whatever reserve? Yeah, something like that. Do you have a preference between the two? To your I, recollection? I like, I think I probably like the regular one better, to be real honest with you. Yeah, See, I, I, I went the other way. I liked the the copper pot a little bit better. Now, what I will tell you was was decent. I, I'm gonna get the name wrong. It was something like the bicentennial or whatever it was. It was um had to do something about like a tree that was like the confederation. Oh, that one. What is it? The confederation. That's what it was. Yeah, that one's good. That that one I've had and it was, I only tried it as a sample and I liked that one. The other two are like you have to try to like them. That okay. one I actually liked. Now I will say this: the, the forty pick I liked better. The my original forty pick when it first came out is way better than the forty pick I own currently. That was a different bottle. I don't know if it was older juice was in it or what. That was mm -hmm. way better. The current one's okay. I would say the copper pot is better than my current one, but my old one was better for forty pick. But the unity, the unity is fantastic. Interesting. That I really like. I have not tried the unity yet. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. A sample of it. I sent you some. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Matt. I appreciate your generosity. I always almost feel bad when I say, oh, I haven't had that because I know immediately you're going to be like, I'll send you samples, which I'm psyched about. <laughs> it's already there. I feel a little guilty. <laughs> yeah, but it's already at your house because I already sent it there. Oh, well, then by all means, you should you should have sent it to me. <laughs> you probably still have like twenty something samples at least. You probably I know it's still uh, it's still closed. I haven't even broken the the tape yet. <laughs> well, because I want to do that on a stream with you. I, I, oh, absolutely. You know, it seems to make sense. I have no idea what's in there, um, other than the couple things that you told you. You told me there's a couple Blantons in there, but other than that, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. You said that, 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 you're not going to be able to read his writing when you do open them oh up. Oh my god, no, no, no clue. No clue. <laughs> oh Matt, we need to come up with a better system. Yeah, I go over, um, I go over, and I actually write the labels so that I can make sure that I can read them. Oh, that's so uh, nice. Yeah, I don't do that. Of course, I'm yeah, so your samples built like two in the morning. That's okay. <laughs> you know what? I, as long as I don't care what it says on it, as long as it tastes good. That's all. That's true. It's like I don't know, like forty something samples. I think and something like that. I sent you so. Yeah. You get them eventually. So I have the Singleton and the Cardew Gold Reserve left. Okay. Let's do the Singleton first because I think the Cardew is a lot better personally. By the way, just like how out of place is the Singleton? It, it, for those of you who have actually watched uh, Game of Thrones, you've got the, the Targaryens, the Starks, and Tully. <laughs> yeah. It's like we got a shitty fish. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, what a great... I get a fish. Wow. <laughs> it's like the reject family. 
I know, right? <laughs> That's why their scotch cost $25. Right. Because they're like, that family sucked. They all died at a wedding because they're stupid. <laughs> Went and trusted a horrible, horrible man who died a, a very satisfying death. You know, it wasn't even his... I mean, the trusting of him was dumb. Yeah. But what Rob did was dumber. Oh, you know, absolutely. like, he brought it upon himself and his whole damn family. Exactly. Idiot. Yeah. That's why he also deserved to die for stupidity. Right. Well, Steve, you're right. They should be a fish. And that does make sense. I'm more saying that of the three space sides, it, right, as if you assume Stark is a space side, they're just out of place. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they swim with the fishes now. I got They got that going for them. No <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, well, Eric, you're, you're, you're on five. season four, then you're fine as far as the spoilers go. He's already watched these. Yeah, season three is when the Red Wedding happened. Yeah, you already saw the Red Wedding, Eric. You're fine. Yeah, so if you if you slept But I will that, keep in mind that I will not, I won't say anything past season three for you. <laughs> you know, I don't know about you guys. I'm starting to appreciate all of my, like, branded Glen Karens at this point. Mm -hmm. To the point where I've got a just a plain one, and it's just boring. Like, it's not I know. as much fun. It's not as much fun. Yeah, that's why I started drink the Crusader ones because they're just mm -hmm. way more fun to look at. Yeah, I, you guys sell those, those, right? Do what now? The you, plain you sell your... We have a whiskey vault. Mm. Oh, okay, nice. You sell your your glasses, right? No, we need to. Oh, you <laughs> we should. Haven't, we haven't made a whole bunch yet. We need to. Okay, you should. Yeah, if you've actually been asked about that's probably gonna be the first merch we sell is probably with the Glen Cairns because yeah. people seem to actually want them. So probably do that. We're trying to work on that and t-shirts and coins, so we have it all ready to go. That's some of my next goals of those things to be done. Mm. So that's what we get asked about. So that's what we're gonna make. I will say if you're getting a decent price on those Glen Cairns, it's uh, it's um worth selling. I mean yeah. I, I do the double print, like the print on the front and the back. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I sell them for eighteen dollars. I'm not making a ton of money off of them, um, but I would imagine you guys probably could. I, like, I think I know what yours cost you. Um, yeah. You could probably sell them for you know about the same amount. Do do a little better, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, yeah, they actually turn out really good. Um, my friend is then actually etched them at works at the liquor store, and that's how we actually got them all etched by him. And he did a good oh, nice. We there were a few prototypes, but this ended up working out pretty good. Matt, I am shocked to hear that you have a connection somewhere. <laughs> shocking, I know. <laughs> well, you'd be shocked if it was only one. That would be shocking, but it's, it's multiple stores. <laughs> I'm actually using the same guy that Bourbon Sane uses. Really? Yeah, we like that store, though, because he's just a local. He's a mom-and-pop type store, not one of the big box. Mm -hmm. I really am enjoying the nose on this one. This is uh, more in the pineapple, um, apricot kind of territory. Tropical fruity. More tropical fruity. Um, I like it. That's funny. I agree. I have to say, Eric Waite's comment that Game of Thrones is like Dungeons and Dragons porn movie <laughs> is pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that pretty um, much what makes it great, though, in general, some version of porn? <laughs> so, Matt, I have, a, I have a question for you. The uh, Kergeliki 17 there. Yeah. Or is that, uh, it, this is the twenty-three. It is the twenty-three. Okay, I, I was I was not sure. Is the seventeen the same color? Um, I think the case is I actually don't own a seventeen. I've never even seen a seventeen. I, I've seen it on the internet, but I've never seen one in person. Okay. But I do know on October fifth, Kregelki will be here, and we will try the seventeen. Nice. So mm. be, I've actually seen the seventeen at that place local to me. Um, oh, sweet. I don't think they have it anymore now. That I think about it, but it, it I, I'm like. 80% sure it was the same color. Either way, it doesn't matter. What um, What is your opinion of that? You don't have to crack it open or anything. I'm just curious because I, I had the 13, like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. You we don't have to crack it open while we were over there. Yeah. We got a pour of it while we were over there, too, so we can good. actually tell you what we think. Oh, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Will, you've been, uh, I would love to hear what you think. I haven't had this one in a long. I only I opened it up at the liquor store with the, with the the guy because I was there like at eleven o'clock at night because the rule of Texas as long as you're in the store by nine eight nine p.m. you can stay until you want to leave mm. if they'll let you <laughs> and he lets me stay so I don't care so we'll throw out a BS and open crap open crap up I buy and then we uh, you know leave eventually nice Sarah did you get a pour of that as well yeah yeah it smells like I'm running through a meadow 
It's a lot of tropical fruits. Really? That's so much I, different than the, the 13. It's, it's, yeah, it's grassy and floral. Grassy and floral. It's butterscotch. It's pineapple. Am I misremembering? Like the 13 was totally like almost harsh, look, right? Matt's going to tell you. I'll just find out. Well, shit, look at the color difference on them. Yeah, it's been a wicked wow, long time since I've had the 13. Like it was like episode seven. 10 years, you know, different. So. So they should, yeah, I mean, in the glass, let's see. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the fruits are so much darker on the 23. Yeah. It's kind of a light nose on the 13. Maybe it's the taste of the 13 that I'm remembering. All right, the face, the face, the yeah. face that that's the face. <laughs> that's, that's got a funk on it. I don't know. That's got like a weird drying sensation on the. Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't had this in a while either. Yeah. Oh, that's like crazy drying. You know, it's funny. The Craig Ellicky 13, I got it for a birthday gift. Um, so I started this, my channel back in 2015. Um, I think it was like March. My birthday's in May. And I, I think I got the bottle for my birthday in May. So it, it was probably like, episode, I think it was episode like 12, actually, now I'm thinking about it. Um, either way. So my, my brother-in-law got me the bottle, and it was the first whiskey I had with a label like that, where it was just like, this is not necessarily about marketing. It's about, like, here's this whiskey that has probably been around for a while, like, I, I knew nothing about it at the time, but I remember just thinking based off the label that it was probably terrible because it was just no marketing to it. But see, I thought that the, when I when I had this before the thirteen, I remember liking it, but compared to the twenty three, I really don't like it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a really weird. The twenty three is the twenty three is glorious. It is deep and rich. Um, it tastes like it should have bubbles on the finish. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are having the 23. I'm going to have some bookers. I'm going to. This one's going to be the 2804. So, I uh, I brought three bookers with me because I was going to make the same joke three times, but then I decided against it because it wouldn't be funny. So. We killed it the first time. And the th and the third one is 2901. So I don't even want to have that. So. Don't even want to open that one up. Yeah. Have you gotten the O2? What was that? Have you gotten uh, Kitsch, not Kitsch Staple, Shiner, Shiny? Not shiny, yet. Shiny uh, I saw it the other day. I almost bought it. And it's it's tough because I used to have a, a connection at, at Jim Beam that would just send me bottles. And now mm. it's like paying $80 for it, it for an unknown quantity. It just sucks. <laughs> but then there's a, there's a place somewhat near me that sells the same $80 bottle for like $55 if it's there. So mm -hmm. I usually just try to wait until it's there. That's fair. Mm. I picked a expensive yeah. bottle to make a thing. That was beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Uh, that twenty-three year uh, that definitely shows up on the palate um, and on the nose as well. It mm -hmm. smells very, very rich and dark and deep, and it tastes rich and dark and deep and uh, worthy of that age statement. Yeah, I've heard the thirty-three and the fifty-one are unbelievable though. And the fifty-one you can try for free. Because they hand it out as just a, a promo item, the 51 year Kregeliki. So, which is really nice of them. But also, uh, I'll, I'll take a 51 year Frisky for free. That works for me. Right. Do you think it dropped under 40% uh, and they can't actually sell it as whiskey anymore? I don't know. I don't know. It's got to still be whiskey. I think just doing it as, as a marketing campaign for as goodwill. That seems like a really expensive marketing campaign. Versus a really great thing to do with a barrel you can no longer sell. <laughs> <laughs> Which that may be, it may be like it, it's at 79 or something. Well, right. Right. It's, it's so barely under 79.8. Yeah, so I see I whiskey she, want, she wines is in the uh, chat. I'm going to guess it's Bobby, not Sam. 
She's probably passed out. I uh, actually didn't even see the end. I just kind of know Sam at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she tends to go hard during her streams, which makes it much more entertaining, but doesn't have lasting effect. So. <laughs> I got to pace myself. Five o'clock in the morning comes fast. Yes, it does. Oof, you wake up at five? Oh, you don't know. Oh, for you. What kind of crazy person are you? One that doesn't want to pay for uh, child care in between oh. times that I'm at work and he's, you know. <laughs> I suppose that's realistic. So since Sarah loved this cardu um, last time from the box that we sent um, Bobby and Sam, I'm really excited to try the Game of Thrones cardu. Hmm. All right, we can move on to that one then for sure. Let's do Sam's that. awake. Shocking. <laughs> oh, hey, Sam. I wish that there was some way for me to kind of stick Eric Waite's coin right in the middle of my forehead. I could be kind of like a uh, oh, shoot from Stargate. I forget what they're called. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. No. I can test it. Yeah. Test oh, I had that one. Uh, yeah. Double sided tape. Uh, what what are the somebody in the chat is going to know this? What was what was what, what, Tilk? What was he? Sorry. What did you say? You you I could barely hear you. What? Well, sorry, I was just saying it was um, Stargate, right? So the the TV show had uh -huh. the, the aliens, the the you know the ones that were still in service of the the bad guys. They had these gold things. Jaffa, yeah, that's what it was. And Tilk was the. He was the the guy that kind of came on to, onto the team. Never mind. And just being nerdy, not that I'm outside of the realm of being that with the the group of people watching us. But Stargate's a a show I watched a lot of. I watched all yeah. of it actually. Actually, that's so. that's my buddy Matt. He used to work at Goody Goody, but he moved to Michigan. So, but we appreciate it. he still subs to the channel, hangs out in the chat with us occasionally. So, which is awesome. He used to come to all of our events all the time, but mm -hmm. a little far to come from Michigan for an event. I remember hmm. them. So I'm not loving the nose on the car, do. Uh, oh, sure. It's not bad. It's just uh, it's very unlike the other space I've we've had. Let's see how it compares. I'm gonna compare it. So DH Silv, uh, did you watch Stargate Universe? Because I, boy, was I sad when that that went off the air. Nerd. Yeah, the nose is different. This one has a little bit of a thunk compared to the just regular uh, 12 year. Yeah, I'm with you. It, it really just, it doesn't smell great. No. Yeah, the 12 smells better. Yeah. Okay, let's compare. This doesn't smell bad. It just smells. It smells off. It, it has more yeah. of a hay, more of a. It's like a barnyard, but it's not that same um, bourbon barnyard I don't know. that it people describe. Like moldy to me, like wet. Yeah, Eric Wake's correct. Wait. Cardew is the base of Johnny Walker. Don't make me hate something. No, Cardew's good. It doesn't taste like Johnny it's Walker. Great until it goes into Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. There's a couple of Johnny Walkers that aren't bad. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the the platinum better than the blue. Agree. The yeah. green is better than all of them, though. The, it depends on the green because there's the um. I remember trying the green back when I like before I, long before I even started the channel. Mm. I liked the green a lot, and then <laughs> after I started the channel, it was probably like two years before I got to the green. I didn't like it as much, and I don't think I feel like it was a different whiskey at that point. It was. A you had the whiskey. old bottle oh. versus the new bottle? Correct, yeah. We well. just did that review, too. We filmed that uh, yesterday for our channel as well. Um, I have an old bottle okay. of Johnny Walker Green uh, that's actually the pure malt mm. that was gifted to me earlier this year. It was an unopened bottle uh, that had sat in a, in a liquor cabinet for years and years and never been opened because they, didn't, they knew it was peated and they knew they didn't like it uh, and finally gifted it to me. So we actually just compared those to a brand new Johnny Walker 15, and the and the difference is very, very different. Yeah. You get that in the blender, I suppose. <laughs> how, about, how, about, how about the taste on this Cardew? It's it's very deceptive, the nose. Uh, the, the taste is much better than the nose. At least oh, yeah. The, yeah. The funk isn't there. 
No. There's no funk on the taste. It's all just like bright fruits. Mm. Yeah, it's all dulled Ooh. down completely in the Game of Thrones version, unfortunately. I like the original 12 better. Did I, did, I, did I ever tell you guys my story about the Johnny Walker Blue? Mm -mm. All right, so funny thing. So I was working at this smaller company. It was 13 people. And we had, every year, we had a, a decent, actually a, a pretty good, it's almost better than, than my multi-billion dollar company I work for now, uh, Christmas party. They would take us to Foxwoods, which is in Connecticut. It's a huge casino. And uh, we, would, we would play, you know, we'd, we'd gamble. But before that, we would all go to this big um, golf course. Like it was, you know, you play around of golf. We all sucked, but a couple of people really liked it. A couple of the owners, they were really good at golf. Either way, so we'd play, we'd spend the whole day golfing, and then we'd go to the casino. We would have just kind of like a company meeting in some random room. And if you could answer whatever questions or if you made a really good point, they would just like throw you a $50 chip. And it was like a really fun thing. So towards the end of the, the whole thing, we would all kind of go out to the casino floor and you could just get drinks or whatever you want. But you would get like normal stuff like a Jack and Coke or like a gin and tonic or whatever. I decided that was my moment. And that was when I was going to get myself a Johnny Walker Blue. And at the casino, it's $40 for a pour. <laughs> so, you know, and I thought to myself, I was like, I, I'm going to get this. Like, I, I made it a, a thing. I'm going to get this. I'm not going to get anything else. That's what I want my night to be. And had I been ordering Johnny uh, Jack and Cokes all night, I probably would have spent like $70. You know, I would have just gotten like 10 of them because we were sleeping there too. Um, so anyway, the, the Monday morning rolls around. We're all back at the office. And then uh, there were three different bosses at this place, and all three of them called me into their office. And <laughs> it was me sitting with all three of them, and they were like, did you order a Johnny Walker Blue? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, you really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'm like, what's the problem? And they're, they're like, well, it was $40 for a drink. I was like, all right, let me just tell you, if this is going to be a problem, I will like, I'll give you two twenties. We'll just be done with it. But uh, they were just like, it just shows a lack of consideration for the company. And you know, just, off it. And I'm just like, come on. Like I'm a, I was like 23. I'm like, I'm dumb. Like I'm a 23 year old <laughs> dumb kid. I want to have like a crazy whiskey on my company's dime because. Like did they give you a spending really limit? What was that? Did they give you a spending limit? No, not at all. They never said that. it's their fault. It totally. And I'm like, I, I truly think I was in the right here, especially yeah. because mentally I was making a choice between a bunch of drinks or a single drink I really wanted. So right. you're the money. I don't. I don't feel the least bit guilty about it. But I, 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 I did tell them I was like, if it's going to be a problem, if it's going to change your opinion about me whatsoever, I will pay for it. Um, and they were like, no, no, don't worry about it. Just don't do it again. You know. So it's that was, that was kind of Who cares? Well, I ended up leaving the company and uh, like maybe a, less than a year later. Um, <laughs> they were a fine company and everything. It was just, you know, whatever. Like the, the chat is on my side, which is not surprising yeah. a bunch of whiskey drinkers thinking I made the right choice about a whiskey, but I'm still, you know, I'll take Seriously. your side. <laughs> I think you saved them. I think I heard you save them $35 when not ordering a bunch of Jack and Cokes. For, it was $40 for the, for the dram. Right. And, uh, each each with Jack and Coke, I actually looked because I, I like I said, it was a conscious decision. Each Jack and Coke was seven dollars, and I myself probably would have had five of them if not more. See. You know, because they pour them weak there, and I was playing craps, I was playing blackjack. Like I would have kept getting drinks. So plus that soda makes you just suck it down real fast because it just mm -hmm. tastes good. Absolutely. So just keep them coming. I honestly like the 12 year better than the Game of Thrones version. Totally. Mm -hmm. But the the funk did not show up. That that it's not on the wet taste. hay didn't show up at all on the taste. No. I completely agree. If if for some reason any of you are able to get your hands on the Cardu Game of Thrones at this point, don't let the nose detract from your right. opinion because the taste is very different. Yep. I completely agree with that. All right, it's time to go to better whiskey. I don't know. We still have the um, – wait. So we – oh, yeah, we actually already did all three of the Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. 
I think they did all the ones you have, Bill. Well, don't worry about what I have. I have another Booker's I could still for. <laughs> that works. Yeah. So, so, somebody was like, three times making the joke is boring. Make it ten times. And then That's you're right. Done. That's right. So I pull out the uh, the Tamdu 10-year, 43%, heavily, heavily sharied. <laughs> I think that Sarah's going to like this. Were you, did you think you were just going to say Pete did? I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm about to pour Matt, and you said heavily, heavily. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> We thought you, said, you were going to say Pete did. You said sure. I was like, okay, we're good. <laughs> I like Eric's response. How would I have fired you for a red? <laughs> <laughs> good point. You're fired because you have poor whiskey choices in life. Get out. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go pick one more thing. It's not going to be a space side, but just since okay. you're you're all having a drink, don't wait for me. It'll take me a minute. So okay. good. Don't move your bar, okay? <laughs> yeah, for, for anybody, I don't know if they the chat we the uh, thing we had with Bill, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago, or whatever. Um, yeah, that was pretty entertaining when uh, they got pretty drunk and decided to move the bar and show us how things move oh, and lights move. It opens. It was like one of the greatest moments in YouTube history. <laughs> Absolutely, I still laugh about that almost on a daily basis because it's so yep. damn funny. Seriously. Just the screeching of the bar moving across the floor. God. It sounded so loud on his microphone. Mm. All right, guys. I got my Jack in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking uh, Jack Daniels. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, he shot it back. Oh, God. <laughs> but he didn't take the drink. He's just holding it. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, tasty. <laughs> my my mother in law actually got me this this headband. She was at a, a random bar, and I think she saw it, and she just asked the bartender for it, and she's like, "My son in law would love that." So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, it has to be Sam saying this, and it is. You know, what? I saw Sam in the chat. I had to impress her. You know, she's absolutely. Yeah, we're best friends, so. We'll make Sam come in here and drink space out. It'll be entertaining. <laughs> I will we say. I did that once, though. Sorry. I, I know I'm totally derailing here. Um, while I was getting the Jack Daniels, I heard you guys talking about when I moved the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went back. I went back and I watched it. I think it almost took me two weeks before I finally went back and rewatched that. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> like, that was just circle. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so funny. <laughs> we all walked our shit on that one because it was the yes. most funny crap ever. You know, I think that's what made it so funny is that all of you were not only laughing your asses off, but you were trying not to laugh because you yeah. wanted my camera to keep the attention. Uh -huh. So you were all just like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we were really worried about your floors. Yeah, right. I mean, it's knowing now that you guys were worried about it, like it's on little. You know, those little uh, foam, or not foam, velvet, whatever you call them. The, the pads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The furniture mover pad dealies. Yeah, the yeah it was totally dealies. fine. <laughs> I do like this one a lot, Matt. Hello, Fight for Sound. We've not seen you here. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, this Tamdu is really good. I, I, the cast strength is not open, but we'll eventually do a review of this one in the cast strength. Okay. I'm sure yeah, this is really lovely. Twist, twist my arm. I really like this. Is a, have you had ten minutes? Yeah, really does come out a lot in this. It's tasty. Hey, have Bill, have you had ten before? And it's gone. Have I? I don't think I have. Ah, well, you should. It's tasty. I, I probably should. You probably should. Yeah. Well, which I one think are you so. drinking? The ten? This is the ten year. Yeah. How much is a ten year? I wasn't. I think it was like. I it was like 45, 50 bucks. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it's not bad for a tenure. Certainly for a scotch at this, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm actually curious, Matt, if, if not that like I want to compare on uh, stream here, but I'm curious if just being in Texas versus Massachusetts makes any difference in price whatsoever. I'm sure it does. I mean, I don't know. Are you state that, controlled? Yeah. Oh, well, that, that's going to make a difference. And that makes a big difference. Make a difference. Hmm. Okay. I, 
I was more thinking about like distance wise, because like Massachusetts obviously a little closer, but like not when you're thinking global, like it's I don't know. Yeah, I mean the shipping difference between Scotland and Texas and Scotland and you know California or even Hawaii, it doesn't make any difference. Right. Yeah. Essentially I mean, all you're doing is shipping it to a distributor here in the US who is then going to distribute it to you know the places we've decided upon. So that's a good. Your, point. your your shipping cost only goes to that one person. Yeah. So here's a question for you guys. Since you're uh, moving on to things I don't have, I'm gonna do one one more drink here tonight. Um, we've drank all of the same stuff, and then you guys had a couple of extra things. Is there anything that you want to go back to? Like, what would you choose? To go back to. Tri- probably that Glen Grant 12, to be real honest, of the things we did tonight. That's probably my favorite one we all tried. That was the one yeah. I was going to pick as well. I like that one too. Um, right. Well, I'm going to go back to the Glen Grant. You guys can do whatever you want. I'm going to go back to the Glen Grant. I mean, again, the, the car do, but the 12. We didn't necessarily do that one tonight, but. Uh, the Glen Goyne was my favorite, the first one we started with. I enjoyed the heck out of that one. I forget which one is in this class. Now, Eric Waits asking about the, uh, the peated Madeira from Glen Levitt. That is really good. I do have a bottle of that. It's oh, that one's good. That's my favorite of the Madeira series is the peated by far. Yeah, it's quite tasty for sure. So, Matt, I feel like uh, I feel like you should put up some shelves behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Your job is to my wife to allow us to do this. I I can be very very persuasive. See, that's the thing. I need all my whiskey tuber friends to convince my wife to let us put shelves up behind us. Well, I mean, she's it's already let you hang up all that flare. I mean, yeah, <laughs> flare. <laughs> I do like the whiskey signs. I mean, you have V O up there. Like, who even wants that? Yeah, all that. Uh, I don't know. Well, because that's the whiskey signs I found in college. I think I, the, like the most expensive one I paid was like fourteen bucks on eBay back when nobody gave a shit about whiskey bar signs. Yeah, they're all like the seventies. <laughs> uh, back when eBay was a thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what you should do, Matt? You should resell all of those signs. Show your wife how much money you made based off of that, and then say, you know what? I'm going to use this money to put up some shelves. It'll look wonderful. You'll get all my boxes off the ground. You'll have so much more space. You'll have your office back, maybe? Yeah. See? You know, like I said, I can be persuasive. I love um, what, uh, what's, I don't know if it's Sam or Bobby says, if it's a yeah. low wall, you may rip your house on you put two, enough bottles on the wall. This is a valid point. We should, we, we must research this. You should. I don't really want to rip down the wall. Especially then, all the, all the balls will fall, and I'll cry, and my bar will be ruined. Yeah, oh, yeah. There are other walls. walls. <laughs> I've seen your house. I realize there are other walls. That is one thing I'm, I'm a little jealous of you guys. So, like, my wife has told me I could use our basement if I really, really wanted to. I could remodel it to be like a whiskey studio thing. Um, the problem is, I've made a commitment to myself to only ever spend whiskey dick money on whiskey dick stuff. I don't want to use personal money on stuff. Um, and there's just no way I could remodel anything based off the whiskey, whiskey dick money. So I don't know, like bourbon saying what he just did. Like, I want to do that. Yeah. So, he does, like his yeah. Was awesome. I really like what he did. Yeah. I would love to do something like that. If we had a business, we would do that. You guys deserve that, Matt. I mean, for real, like, is there anything more in your life that you devote your life to maybe other than family than whiskey? <laughs> <I'm> a family. <laughs> well, I said maybe. Well, <laughs> other plans, and I'll tell you about them after we get off. Um, that might be where the whiskey ends up instead. Yeah, I, there's there's some really cool things we thought about doing. So mm-hmm. that might be where the whiskey goes instead. So yeah. it may be a mute point. Although it would be really cool to put those wood planks up on the wall. This because it would look cool. It looks mm-hmm. like a barrel. Yeah. Which I really Although like. you have the vaulted ceiling, I feel like that would be a, kind of a pain in the ass to do those type of walls. No, oh, that's true. It probably would be. But you know what? That's what other people are for. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> like, fuck you it. Know. I don't have to think about this. I pay money for it. <laughs> this is that kind of shit I don't do because somebody wife tells me, you fucked it up. What's wrong with your shit? Right. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> like, I ain't a handyman. I drink whiskey. <laughs> exactly. I, I just pay people for that crap. In fact, I'll pay them. I won't pay them. I'll give them whiskey. Right. I'll, I'll yeah. buy the supplies, but I'm not about to pay for your labor. 
You know, it's funny. My, my wife and I, we, this is total like first world problem. So we, we decided this year that we were either going to hire somebody to do our yard for us or to clean our house for us. And guess who won? <laughs> Not me. I'm still out there mowing the lawn every every weekend. So, yeah, this is our first year I ever had somebody start mowing the lawn. I'm like, I don't have time for this crap anymore. I just yeah. I used to like it because it's cathartic to go mow the lawn. Yeah, but now because no kids out there, the wife's not out there yelling at you. You're just out there by yourself mowing the lawn. It's mm -hmm. nice. It's and too damn hot. Yep, it, it is too damn hot. I mean, it's fine in the winter and <laughs> spring, <Right. laughs> but the rest of the, you know, eight months. Is... Are you guys mowing the lawn like year round? No, we usually mow it from really. um, March. You have four months August. where you don't have to. At like August, it dies. So you yeah, don't really have to anymore. Sure. <laughs> okay. And then you have uh, like December and January, maybe where it's just too cold and it doesn't grow. Mm -hmm. So. Have like three months months living in Texas, have you ever had a white Christmas? Yes. Yes. It's freaking really? horrible because it's ice. That's awesome. Yeah. I haven't had one living in Texas, but yeah, I've had one my probably life. Probably like six or seven years ago, and we had to drive out to my uh, in-laws, which is like, usually about 45 minute drive. It was like four hours to get home. It was horrible. <laughs> I was yeah. like, this is bullshit. I, didn't, I hate it. When I think of white Christmas, I think of what you have, Bill. What mm. I grew up with, actual snow. Oh, where yeah. did you grow up? Huh? Where did Where did you grow up? Massachusetts, Connecticut. Really? Where? I was born in Springfield. Oh, okay. Massachusetts. Right. That yeah. explains the and hair. Then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mass fall through and through. <laughs> you totally get it. As soon as I said that, you got it. <laughs> and then I lived in Connecticut for about nine years before we moved okay. here. Yeah. Um, so I have seen true white Christmases. Yeah. Here it's just ice Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's it. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I mean, and they like call it the said, East like, Coast over here instead of the East Coast. They call it the Ice Coast. Like I, I'm a snowboarder, and it's it's brutal. You got to make sure those uh, edges are sharp, otherwise you just fall. So. Uh -huh. Well, and everything closes here. Mm -hmm. Everything. Like yeah. they can't. They can't drive in it Life. if there's just the slightest bit of chance. And we shouldn't because we're idiots. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel, I feel like every winter there's there's stories of just, you know, oh, my God, South Dakota got, like, a quarter inch of snow and everybody freaked out and, like, left their cars on the highway. You know, it's. Yep. Yeah. Here it's, <laughs> oh, my God, there's a chance it's going to happen, so we're going to delay school by four hours and nobody leave. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I don't know how many uh, people in the chat or, or you guys are car people, but I used to have an RX-8. Um, mm -hmm. They had a Wankel engine. It was like a very much a sports car. And I remember living, I was living in New Hampshire at the time, and I, I got to think we had at least a foot of snow, if not more, on the highway. And it hadn't mm -hmm. even been plowed yet. And I was just driving through it. And um, I mean, the, my, I mean, it's a sports car. It's right next to the ground. But I'm just like, yeah. fuck it. I'm going through it, right? So I, yeah, exactly. How do, how do you whiskey knows knows the car? Um, it totally just didn't make any sense whatsoever. You just don't go anywhere in the snow. But if you grow up in New England, you figure it out. Like you just have a, a feel for it, you know. So you really do. And then I lived in Utah for a year, and it's actually even worse there because I was like right in the mountains and they have a hard time driving there too. It's sad. Like you guys live in it. Come on. <laughs> Eric Wait says, I, I like me, it. Uh, sorry, Eric Wait is asking me how I fit in our in <laughs> RX8. He's not wrong. I'm 6'3". Um, somehow, like it, most of it was, so let's see if this works. I was basically driving like this <laughs> I remember actually while I had that car, I was dating a girl, and most of the girls I've dated in my life were probably like five two, five four. Just tall guys tend to like really short women. Um, my wife now is five eight, but I was dating a girl who was about six feet tall, and I just have no idea how either one of us fit into that car. <laughs> so. I don't know. It was it was a good car. Sight to see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I can see as you guys ripped out the the two front seats and you sat in the back and just drove yeah, like Arnold Schwarzenegger style from Commando. Yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> Lol. Get the car and get up seat out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got about nine more minutes, ten more minutes before the end of our stream. Sure. Uh, I want to move on to one more before we finish up. Uh, I got the Longmorn 16. Oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, I love that whiskey. Yes, it's so good. I actually tried that for the first time over in Austin. Um, actually, yeah, one of two times I've had that whiskey was in Austin. Yeah, because we had both. Because I brought the purple one, and then some people brought the old, the old brown boxes. So yeah, I know you had both while you were there. I, I was gonna say I had the other one, not the one that you have in your hand. Um, and then when uh, I was in San Diego one time, I, I did a meetup at the Whiskey House, which is a place that just has every single, like they have the Guinness whis uh, Guinness record for most whiskeys that are on the shelves. It's like 3,000 or something like that. I know. And uh, you can order any of them. And um, I had the Longmorn 16, and I ordered it for everybody that had come. Um, mm. It was just amazing, right? Like it's so good. It is. It's, it's incredible. And to be honest, every long one I've ever had is freaking phenomenal. Because when we were at Psalm School, um, Nathan Yui brought, I think, three or four different long ones. One of them was an, was a Russian Export 15. That was amazing. I, I have a sample, thankfully, of it hidden around here somewhere for myself. That's really good. So I'll, when I find it again, I'll drink it. <laughs> when I find it again. That's the problem in general. It's like, I don't know. There's whiskey. Well, there's whiskey everywhere here, so you know that's it's a, it's a problem to have to go find. <laughs> it's like go find those samples. They're in a box somewhere. The question is which box. So I have a question for for you, Matt. So and I I keep posing questions to you only because I I know that it's not whatever whatever. So you obviously you have air conditioning running like all the time. Do you ever? find any ill effects from the heat there on your whiskey at all? No, I keep it at 72 all the time here. Okay. And in the winter time, I let it get cooler to like 66 at the, at the, at the <laughs> coldest, but that's about it. I never let it get above 72. Okay. Yeah. And it's mostly all away from windows and, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah, we've got blinds on everything. A lot of it's in dark rooms and every, a lot of it's in cabinets too. There's not much that's out that's exposed to light anyway. Um, there's very little that sits out. So it's not really, it's not, it's not an issue as far as heat goes. Only ever, yeah, whatever freaked me out is if we had a uh, AC go out, then that is an immediate, I must call into work and take care of the air conditioning for the whiskey's sake. I, <laughs> for everything else, the whiskey has to be saved. It's very important. Save the whiskey. This smells so good. This is such a good pour. I know, I'm very jealous of you right now. I'm sitting here with my Glenn Grant 12. I think that's awesome. Bill, you, you didn't fit in the truck, so you had to buy a bigger one. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to just like overrun the. Yeah, so I, I went to go uh, buy a Toyota Tacoma. Yeah. And uh, I sat in it, and and like I said, I'm six three, so I, I sit in the car, and right, and my head is just like this. <laughs> feeling, and I'm just like, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> no. So the uh, the dealership uh, guy who happened to know actually my my ex roommate from um, college, they were like cousins or something. He was like, "Hey, have you ever tried the Toyota uh, Tundra?" I was like, "No, no idea about it." So I, I'm not a very well informed buyer, but I I do typically know like what a car is worth, and I love to haggle. So like I just I haggle the crap out of a car. Um, which, by the way, anybody watching, haggle out of your own trade-in. Don't haggle out of the car that you're buying because they tend not to move too much on that, but they'll move on the thing that you're you're uh, trading in. Anyway, so the guy has me try a Toyota Tundra, which is bright red and is my favorite car ever. And uh, I fit in it great, and it's wicked comfortable, and it was $10,000 more. <laughs> so I walked out of there that day, and I was just like, okay. I, I to my wife, I'm like, can I spend ten thousand dollars extra than you thought I was going to? And she's like, "Well, just do your best haggling, and then yes." So, <laughs> but 
you're comfortable and you're not like this. So <laughs> yeah, well, that's the. I mean, it, it really was like my head was again, not only t touching, it was like pushing, you know. So oh, yeah, that's awful. It's, yeah, no, no, thank you. you. Can't drive like that. I don't have that problem. I'm five foot even. <laughs> so. You're five even. How old? Yeah, how old you you're, this. Oh, I'm like five six. Oh, okay. All right. So you're you're on a lower chair or something. <laughs> We're all the real. I'm, just, I'm slouching. slouching. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, <laughs> okay. I'm yeah, not bored. Was, that's fair. It's I, um, I was so sad. So my my very first car, I I think at the time that I bought it, I was 16. So I was probably like, at the time, it was probably like 5'10". Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to buy this red Mustang convertible. And I was so excited to buy it. I had a paper route since I was 12. I had somehow managed to save like $15,000. And the car itself was 16,000. My parents were like, you know, you did good on your grades and everything. We'll, we'll cover the extra cost. We'll pay for your first year of insurance. And um, so I was so excited. I went to the dealership. I sat down in it and I just didn't even fit. And I was so heartbroken. Um, I did end up getting a convertible, which unfortunately, thinking back on it, was total chick car. It was a um, Pontiac Sunfire convertible. Mm. And, <laughs> nice. But I still had a convertible, and I was like the only guy in my grade that had one, which did help, you know, because I was not an attractive uh, high schooler. So <laughs> convertible <laughs> did, did do me some favors. Um, and uh, just it was – I remember that Mustang. Like someday, somehow, I'm gonna fit into a Mustang convertible, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just make it work. It'll be awesome. That is awesome. Well, I mean, you fit just fine with the top back. Yeah, you just can't only drive when it's not right. Well, <laughs> and and the the funny part is that during the the winter, you know, the first winter I had that um, uh, Pontiac Sunfire, I had the top down all the time because just on a completely unrelated note, I started playing paintball, and I. Um, I found this this mullet wig in, in the. I, I realize that's a very non sequitur, but in 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 the high school's like drama club or whatever, which I was not part of. In this case, not the, like, nothing against that. They had a whole bunch of wigs, and I found a wig that looked like a mullet, and I happened to steal it from my high school. And I had that thing for probably about fifteen years. And every single time I played paintball, I would wear the mullet wig. <laughs> like I ended up playing with the same people a lot of time and they just they just referred to me as the mullet and uh anyway so so I would wear the mullet wig while I was driving around in this convertible which would keep my head nice and warm because even when a, as a teenager or like early 20s guy I just did not have great hair <laughs> so it was I actually I, I just found a video of myself back in 2006 and even then I had a really bad widow's peak so yeah. well, I didn't think he was, is an eighties rock band bill. That sounds great. Oh man. I was like the devil child. It was great. I had like, <laughs> had this awesome mullet and I would just friggin' rock out. It was good stuff. That's awesome. I think it's like <laughs> he's siding down. <laughs> party in the front. <laughs> yeah. no, from the front party in the back. That's what it <laughs> mm. <laughs> Bill's a vice principal. It's all good. <laughs> oh, you just reminded me more stories that I will tell another time. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice shirt, by the way, Matt. <laughs> oh, no. It is a Whiskey Dick shirt. We probably wear these in public because it's awesome. That's great. I love that. <laughs> I like to wear it to my kids' karate class because it's. Did you really? <laughs> you think I care? People no, I, I've worn the coffee black whiskey neat shirt out in public before. Got quite a lot of comments on it, actually. They're like, that shirt's awesome. I'm like, I know it's Bill's I channel. You should watch it. <laughs> I wear all my whiskey shirts in public, and I don't give a fuck what people say. Exactly. Especially when I have my five year old with me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on. For what we do here for fun, I mean, come on. Our kids, you think our kids don't know or care? Of course they know. Oh, My kid I mean, likes to smell whiskey, so exactly. It, Mine has a favorite whiskey. She loves uh, the Glen Ross Sherry Cask. That's her <laughs> favorite whiskey. She that makes gets, sense, like, actually. a tiny, tiny amount. That's all she's ever allowed to have. Yep, it's hilarious. <laughs> Killer Schultz saying, "Nice shirt, but Eric doesn't need a shirt." <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> <laughs> we also don't like to wear pants, so we got that going for us. 
You know, I need to have another one of those like uh, epic, like invite every freaking person to come on again stream very soon. Uh, they're so fun. And plus, I'm itching to make another Photoshop. Like, I have to, I have a couple more ideas in my head, but oh yeah, uh, the uh, was it the, the ballerina dancer one? That one's hilarious. So there, was, there was the the wedding the wedding one where we were all jumping. Oh yeah, yeah, that one was great. <laughs> and then there was the uh, the 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 blood oath where we were all. Um, uh, there were a few of us that were like the Reapers. Folks. What was the one before that though? I had the the, the dogs and the, the dogs. Blood. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was the first one. That, that was, was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was a great. Was, all those are great. Those are just like the greatest <laughs> freaking streams. Right. They're like the four hours, four. Of course, oh, on our end, it's like five for the time we get done. Yeah. Well, we've been going for like an hour and a half. Oh, yeah. They're always good. It's always a good fun time. AAs for quitters. <laughs> People like your shirt, Will, by the way. I don't think you um, I don't think you were actually on the stream when you first talked about your shirt. What does your shirt say? I, I, oh, mine is just um, a Glen Karen, and it says "neat" underneath it. Uh, I found this one on Amazon. Uh, I haven't gotten enough whiskey shirts yet. I'm still collecting lots of them, but this is one of my favorites. Oh, so you guys? Never mind. I wouldn't have bothered asking you if you guys didn't sell it. I. Uh, <laughs> you guys yeah. need some shirts. We yeah, need shirts. shirts but actually, we, we thought of some really funny shirts because I know I'm sure a lot of you have figured out in the reviews. I like to say so basically. So that's going to be one of our shirts. We're going to launch the So Basically line. Yes. <laughs> nice. You know, it, it'll be good. Okay. It um, is 11 here. Uh, we have early things to do in the AM. So unfortunately, uh, we are going to have to sign off. Sure. Uh, I never care. Well, why don't we just uh, call it a night then? I've got sleep to do, I suppose. Yeah, you know, sleep. Why? Why would we do well, that? It's midnight here. Yeah. I'm waking up in about six no, hours. I well, thanks for joining us, Bill. I really appreciate it. It's been a fun time talking about Space Side and all the cool stuff that's out there. And I just think it's, you know, a lot of them don't get talked about that often. So it's kind of fun to do some different whiskeys that we don't usually talk about in this channel. So I enjoy it. It's fun. Um, tell everybody where you can be found at if they don't know where you're at already. <laughs> they should know um, they're here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> screw that. Give, give Matt and the Whiskey Crusaders a thumbs up. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Bill. No yeah, problem. For, for this week. Thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate absolutely. it. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. Yeah, so this week on Thursday, we're actually going to have a special stream with Westland. Uh, Matt Fritz is going to be here actually from the distillery for a private dinner, and we're going to stream with him prior. So that'll be a special thing about 6, 6, 15. Central time on Thursday night. And then we'll have another cool review tomorrow. And we'll see you guys next week. And thanks, Bill, for coming on. I really appreciate it. No problem. Uh, real quick plug. I'm doing, uh, I think it, it will probably be the Jack Daniels Rye. No, no. Hang on. Whoa, whoa. We gave you your chance to plug your channel. You said no. And I said <laughs> the thumbs up to you. <laughs> I'm taking it <laughs> go. Wednesday, I'm doing Jack Daniels Rye. And I'm, I'm wearing this thing. So. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.